So, how are you doing guys? Today I'm going to talk a little bit about just cameras in general. Uh, a little bit of Sony, a little bit of Fuji, and just like camera companies overall in general. But I really got upset when I saw a report. It's just a report, so it's rumor, I guess, that Sony was sandbagging their cameras so then they could make more money because they had this autofocus technology a long time ago, which I could kind of understand. You don't want to put something that you don't have 100% out, uh, even if it's in the development stage. But if you have it complete, you should have put it out. And they didn't put it out, which really, it kind of sucks because they're they're sandbagging on purpose. So I like Sony. There's a lot of people that complain about Sony colors. It's too warm or magenta. If you shoot in raw, it really doesn't really matter. You're going to adjust it anyway. You're not shooting in JPEG. Um, if you're a part-time person shooting in JPEG, I mean, you can just take one slider and make it cooler. Like, I don't, you know, if you like green, then you slide it to the green side, I guess. I don't, I don't know. So then I sit there and I say, okay, Fuji does the same thing. They have their film simulations. Uh, so if you like to shoot in JPEG, they're going to, they're not going to release them for the old ones. So the X-T3, X-T2, X-T4, they're not going to have these new film simulations. That's how they get you to buy the new one, right? And so they're not really worth it if you're looking to upgrade. Now, same thing, I'm pretty sure they've had really good autofocus, and the X-T4 shows it as kind of like a little bit of a leap from the X-T3, but nothing crazy. The X-T5 is a huge leap. Um, it was pitch black in a studio, and it was capturing all these subjects. Um so I I do say a couple things on the X-T5 versus the X-T4 versus the X-H2S. So the big thing is the megapixels on the X-T5 are huge. And they're not worth going through and saying, okay, I don't want to get the X-H2S because the CF Express card is so expensive. If you really think about it in the math terms, and I didn't do it at first until afterwards, but the amount of hard drives I'm going to have to buy is going to overcost the CF Express card. Now, if you can't afford the XH2S with the smaller megapixels, I think it's 24 or something like that, 26, then I understand, right? You don't like the flip out screen, then XT4, XH2S is not for you. X-T3 really good. What sucks is that Fuji's not doing OIS on their lenses. So low light's a little crappy um, because it's a little bit more blurry. You can't do these below 60. I mean, unless you have a really heady hand, below 60th of a second. Um, but you can take really good shots with the X-T3. It's a really good camera. So I'm jumping all over the place. But the problem with Sony that I have is two things. The first thing I have with Sony is that they were sandbagging. And the second thing is the cost of these cameras to get into full frame. They have made their APS-C line so bad in comparison to what it could be on purpose so they could sell their full frame. It's a marketing thing, I get it. The APS-Cs are really good. They tried out different things. Autofocus is okay. The 60, 60, 6000 series is, is a good starter area. Now they purposely don't put two card slots in there. They came, they have so many of these small bodies that they made that they couldn't sell. So they probably did, they put full frame in there um, so they could sell a lot of these bodies uh, at a cheaper price. But the the problem is, is that they could make them good. Yes, they overheated. Yes, there's like a 30 minute limit on a lot of them because of probably overheating and just the way that they did things. But the... But the cost to get in, the lenses, all that stuff is super expensive if we're changing over. Um, I've always bought used gear because part of me, it's a tool. Now, I've seen a lot of people go, well, if you think of your cameras as a tool, you're not a professional. I, I think words are just made up so then they can put barriers up on people. So when they say, hey, this is not, you're not a professional if you start taking pictures with a full frame camera and you get paid a little bit, you can start to consider yourself a semi-professional, professional, whatever you want. You could even be like, I'm a pro. 
I don't think that people should be gauged on, I've had a hundred weddings. I've had 3000 portrait sessions. I know exactly how to do lighting 100% at a 45 degree angle and get the best catch light in the eye. Like all of that is your prerogative, whatever you want. If you want big, airy, bright uh, pictures, that's that's you. That's, that's who you are. That's what you want. If you want low contrast or high contrast pictures, you want to go out there and take pictures of a tree or flowers, birds are the hardest. I'm going to tell you the truth. Birds are the hardest, right? Kids, kids are next because they move around so fast. But you want to go do all that kind of stuff, That then that's what you do. If you get paid for it, you're a pro. Yeah, is there something you can learn? There's always something you can learn. I, I can guarantee these pros that were in the industry for hundreds of years, <laughs> if they had the opportunity to take the technology now, they'd be like, oh, I don't know how to use this. I'm, I'm over it, right? But people learn all the time. So if you want to call yourself a pro, you call yourself a pro. Everybody that keeps on coming out and being like, well, you can't call yourself a pro because of this and that. Whatever, man. It's a made-up word. It's just a barrier. It's a box. Think outside that. Uh, there was a guy that I was watching. And he goes, I don't know how to describe my street photography. Don't, don't. It's just photography. You want to call it street photography? Call it. Who cares? Who Who's in charge of all that? That comes to the point where they're like, oh, it's it can only be this kind of composition you can only shoot with this kind of little nobody cares and then going back to lenses now you there was a guy that said you only need two or three good lenses um i think if you have some good primes you can really get some work done and so i know this video is kind of everywhere it's just a rant about everything and i don't think that you should put yourself in a box saying that i am or are not a pro I don't think that this whole marketing scheme where you need full frame is it's a gimmick. It's a joke, because if they were really honest about uh, depth of field and um, noise balance, and all, then they would be saying medium format Hasselblad and the G GFX series. I don't remember who the other one. There's one more medium format camera out there you'd have to take those because they have better dynamic range, better low light performance. Uh, the sensor is bigger. So wh why why is this full frame? The reason why full frame is better is because the companies purposely sandbagged their older cameras when they didn't have to and their APC lineup. Yes, there's a little bit more noise in APS-C because the sensor is a little bit smaller. Uh, but if you're printing, you can't see it. And nobody prints anymore. If you're on digital you're putting it on, on Instagram, it doesn't matter because everybody looks at it for like 0.2 seconds. It, even right here, right now on YouTube, I'm putting up all these images, only like 10 or 15, maybe 30 people are going to see the very last at the end image. And so I know this is a long video and I was just ranting about all sorts of things, but I don't think that we should be falling for this ploy, this you need to have full frame to be a pro or you need to have medium format to be a pro. If you understand a little bit about light, where the shadow is, where the harsh light is, and start from there, I think you're pretty good. If you don't like the way your pictures are, then move your body. Don't sit in one spot. If you don't like the way the model looks in the light that you have, then change the light. Don't be stuck in the static of I need to have it this way because somebody else shot this way. They've been doing it for however long, and they have so much experience on how they want their light that it's different. I have black and white photos that I like shooting, and I change it up all the time because I want a certain look from a certain thing. And I've learned to take just a couple of shots here and there. You know, it doesn't really matter. I'm shooting for fun. I'm shooting for uh, money. I'm shooting for a couple. I'm shooting for... But this is where you get experience, right? You find somebody... You find, go out there, you shoot, and you get experience going that way. So I think that's about it for this one. Um, I'm going to make a video on Sony and Fuji and my lenses here in a little bit. But I hope you have a good night, good day, and I'll see you on the other side.